Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather. Let's take 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 31st of October, last day of the month. Wow, wow, wow. And uh, we'll be able to extend that beyond that with it. So GFS and CM ensembles, regular right around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into the uh, middle of November. I should get like that for you in a moment just to say that first video today was our 6am uk weather forecast we've also released a weekend forecast and the ec42 day for uk and ireland please check out all today's videos and content and thank you so much everybody for doing that right we're going to start off as ever at the moment won't be much longer because the season's uh winding down now i think but we're going to start off uh as ever for the time being at this point of the year um with situation in the uh, tropical atlantic so we've got a yellow edge just here that is disturbance one with a 20 percent chance of site trade formation in the next seven days i don't think you have to worry too much about that and then we have Hurricane Tammy. This became a hurricane uh, more quickly than expected, actually. So uh, Tammy is is uh, now giving maximum sustained winds of 80 bars per hour with a minimum set pressure of 988 millibars. Clicking on Tammy. And, uh, oops, that's wrong. Clicking on Tammy and going here. We can see this is going to remain as a hurricane. Moving northwards over the next few days by the middle of next week, somewhere to the south of, of, of Bermuda, that becomes a tropical storm again. So, uh, it could be category one hurricane, it's currently giving max, max was sustained of 80 miles per hour. Um, and we'll get back to a state of 85 miles per hour over the next two or three days before going back down to maximum sustained of 70 miles per hour at 120, mile, at, uh, 120 hours. So this is going to be a Category 1 hurricane. High in Category 1, 85 miles per hour. Uh, and of course there is the potential back to power up a little bit more. We'll become Category 2. We'll have to wait and see uh, about that. We'll keep a close eye on Tammy in the coming days. Sensing temperature is still sitting at 13.3. That's 2.8 degrees above 61 to 99 average. That's provisional to yesterday, to 20th of October. That should start edging down again over the uh, next few days as temperatures return from being above average to near double in the coming week. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of, couple of weeks, we're at Liverpool today, red line. Is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Liverpool? We're starting off around to a little bit below average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. And basically, those upper air temperature, temperatures are staying very close to average over the next um, week or two, actually. No sign of any particularly, particularly big deviations either way, uh, there to be honest. So, close to average with upper air temperatures. Precipitation wise, um, not dry weather over the next two or three days, but as we go into uh, next week from around sort of Monday, Tuesday onwards, yes, we're going to see more in the way of unsettled weather. It does look like quite a wet ensemble actually, uh, that really from around the middle of next week onwards, plenty of rain to come. So, although the upper air temperatures are averaging, you would look at that and think that you know. It's going to be sort of an average period. Actually, it will be a little bit above average, particularly as we move into November. Reason being, it's going to be very unsettled. So we won't get the cold, um, cold nights, you know, cold, clear nights that uh, will produce uh, frost and whatnot. So at this time of year, particularly so as we go into the end of the autumn and into the winter, average upper air temperatures in an unsettled pattern will tend to uh, lead to... Um, above average temperatures actually down on the surface. And we see this with our temperature anomalies. So temperature anomalies from the 21st, 29th of October, coming out above average at England, Wales, Ireland, near north of Scotland. Um, and that's exactly what you're expecting in an unsettled zone or pattern at this time of the year. Precipitation anomalies, a little bit drier than average, interestingly, for western Scotland, and wetter than average down in the south, telling us that there is something of a southerly tracking jet stream at play at the moment. Latest wind from that from Earth, no school dot net shows we're still being affected by the area of low pressure that is Storm Babette sitting across Scotland. 
that row will be moving away though for the next 24 hours so things finally gonna start drying up this area of low down here uh, to the west southwest of Portugal that is going to be moving in that direction and um, that will be bringing more wet weather through the early part of next week. So we pick that up very nicely on the latest UK bet Euro run starting with chart data uh, for midnight on Tuesday. So that's below. I'll just show you off the west coast of Portugal or to the southwest of Portugal right now. That low will be somewhere across southern England by midnight on Tuesday, bringing further outbreaks of rain up. From the south. Then it's a bit of next week. Low pressure starts coming in from off the Atlantic. So we go as flat as pancake with uh, plenty of low pressure driving in from the Atlantic, bringing heavy rain and or showers in between. Icon again for that area of low pressure across the south up uh, midnight on Tuesday. Then low pressure comes in from off the Atlantic Wednesday to Thursday, bringing wet windy weather in with it. And then through to next weekend, where more low pressure. Waiting in the wings in the Atlantic, that looks like uh, that low there. I think it contains the remains of Hurricane Tammy as well, by the way. It looks like that low is going to bring a spell of wet, windy weather through the second half of next weekend. The GFS midnight run, again, that area of low in the south on Tuesday. Uh, and then low pressure, big low pressure, the Atlantic pushes eastwards across the country through the middle and second half of next week. Quite a strong westerly wind getting going as well uh, through next week with another pretty deep low here developing in the Atlantic through Sunday that could well bring a spell of gale force winds and heavy rain across the country later next weekend and the Atlantic onslaught keeps coming GFS midnight run, so we're in up to the 2nd of uh, November, now into November, and uh, that's looking very unsettled. Again, tight back ice bars indicating gale force winds and heavy rain sweeping in across the country. So Dow use goes on with the GFS midnight run all the way up to the end of it, really, gets us to the 6th of November, and there's no, you know, changes, no deviations, low pressure from the Atlantic continues to bring further bouts of wet windy weather with showers in between the gfs 6z again with that area of low pressure on tuesday bring some outbreaks of rain and then wednesday thursday takes low pressure in from off the atlantic bring wet windy weather in with it you see this is a real atlantic on store pattern another low coming in uh next weekend that bring further heavy rain and potentially strong winds with it as well uh day 10 and beyond it so into the beginning of november low pressure continues to uh rule the roost from off the atlantic um, you know, just was very unsettled right at the very end of GFS 6 then. Signs of, of some higher pressure begin to ridge up from the southwest, possibly a little bit drier by then. It's the 6th of November though, so it's a very, very, very long way out and therefore really unreliable. If you're enjoying the video, please can you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much everyone. Dear Matt, drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our video. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals World. We thank you so much, everyone. Dear Matt, 40 subscribers is going to get us to 17.1k. So if you could give us a sub and tell your friends about to subscribe, that would be incredible. Thank you so much. Right, GM, again, that low in the south on Tuesday. That brings heavy rain with it. And then through the middle of next week, low pressure dries in from off the Atlantic, bringing plenty of wet and windy weather. As it does so, the unsettled weather keeps going up to day 10 with the GM as another area of low pressure comes in off the Atlantic. It's a proper, proper onslaught type pattern. And uh, the ECM rounding it all off with that area of low pressure in the south on Tuesday. That gets out of the way, but more low pressure replacing it from off the Atlantic through Wednesday, Thursday. And further areas of low pressure dominating through to the end of the week and the coming weekend. And even up to day 10, yes, low pressure continues driving in from off the Atlantic, albeit high pressure over Scandinavia is blocking the progress of that low. So a little bit higher of a pressure over Scandinavia there with the ECM compared to most of the other model output. But it's not enough to fend off the Atlantic and we keep these areas of low bringing further bouts of rain. With them, here's the precipitation forecast based on the ECM run. From Tometro.com, so rain and some hill snow mixed in today across Scotland. Very, very, very wet. 
up there from Storm Abet, but finally that gets out of the way overnight tonight and things will start to dry up. So tomorrow will be a much better day, much drier day, sunny spells coming through and um, and finally we can start drying things out. It won't last, so as we go through Monday and Tuesday, more heavy rain piling up from the south, particularly across England and Wales. And then that pushes off was in Tuesday, followed by showers. And then, of course, we're into wet and windy weather from off the Atlantic through the middle of next week. So uh, that's particularly focused on Ireland, England, and Wales with, both, with those outbreaks of rain too. That's just rain out of the way. The Thursday and Friday, we're left with sunshine and showers. They could merge into longer spells of rain at times as well. And then heading up towards uh, day 10, well, further bouts of wet, windy weather coming in from off the Atlantic, keeping the onslaught going. Me, so the options on the table... Within the ECM Ensembles Day 4, Day 10, gets us to the 30th of October, Halloween. Ooh. 17, I'm so sorry, but 17 members of the ECM Ensembles with low pressure in the Atlantic. So, lots of unsettled weather with that one. And 11, again, driving low pressure in from off the Atlantic there. 10, again, with low pressure dominating from the Atlantic, particularly more towards the south with that. Uh, a little bit stronger with higher pressure uh, towards Scandinavia as well with those 10. That does include the control and the operational run there. We have got 9 just here with low pressure again dominating from the Atlantic. And then finally we've got 4, you know, a real minority option, just four that has us under high pressure so most of the options are uh, unsettled at day 10 in two weeks time these are the options that we've got gets us to the 5th of november bonfire night and very very contrasting options totally the opposite of one another which is interesting it doesn't happen very often so 29 members of the ECM ensembles, the majority with low pressure, very much dominating from the Atlantic, so bringing in that strong westy flow, you know, so it's an on ongoing um, a pattern of the onslaught. But 22, a minority option, but quite a significant minority, has a blocking area of high pressure around Scandinavia to the north of Scotland, that'd be much drier, but also much colder with winds coming in from the uh, east. So, um, two options, and they're both very contrasting. So that doesn't happen very often that you get just two options and they'll be the polar opposites of one another. Obviously, the majority option is to keep it unsettled with but low pressure of remaining in control there. CFSB2 finally meets the 500 millibar height to orange break it down into wheat beers. The first wheat beer takes us from the 23rd, 27th of October. So uh, the next week will be very unsettled, low pressure dominates from off the Atlantic week two is going to be the 28th of October, 3rd of November, still with low pressure in control, so still bringing lots of wet wind weather in from the west. Week three is going to be the 4th to 10th of November, higher pressure building up from the south, that turning drier and potentially very mild as well, that will pull up a proper southwesterly flow there. And then week four will be the 11th to the 17th of November, high pressure takes over. Again, the position of the high should bring up very mild air from the south and from the southwest, so turning dry and very, or turning drier anyway, and very mild as we're going further on into November with today's CFS run. We shall see about that. Time will tell. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please could you like, share, and subscribe. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all my videos. And don't forget to tell friends about gals well this. We thank you so much everyone for doing that. As I say, around 40 or so subscribers, would five subscribers, something like that, gonna get us to uh 17.1k. No, uh, please give us a sub. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, just tell what's coming up tomorrow. We have 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. And then we've got the big one. We've got the 8th winter 2023-24 update. Could be a real epic, this one. And for the first time, this, well, not exactly the first time, but we're going to have a real good look at stratosphere uh, data with this one. So I have done a little bit on the strat through the um, winter updates so far, but it's starting to become more of a pivotal element within the winter updates now. So you're going to have a lot, actually, a lot of forecast data 
for uh, for the stratosphere uh, and the stratospheric polar vortex, all of that stuff, um, in our eighth winter update, as well as all of the regular uh, features as well, like sea surface temperature, temperature long so activity, Eurasian soil cover, etc., etc., etc. So that's coming up from 10 a.m. tomorrow, and then at 6 p.m. we shall be live. So uh, we'll be discussing that eighth winter update. We'll do a 10 to 14 day, and um, we will show you some long range from the CFS and from the Blazin Climate Centre in that one as well. So I've got a busy afternoon slash evening ahead, getting all of that together, but you enjoy the rest of your uh, Saturday, and for this one, that's all for now, and thanks so much.